Hey folks, Lester here. Uh, I'm excited today because we have Xander and Kendra. That's Jamie's son and his girlfriend. And we're taking them over to Longhorn Lester's. I'm in the truck ready to go. And as usual, they're taking their sweet time. But uh, it's okay. The Xander has not seen the property over there in a while. And so I'm excited to take him over and show how, how much work we've done and how far things have progressed since the last time he was here. I don't even think that we had the gate and all of that up when he was here last time. So this will be exciting. Um, oh gosh, look, there's Kendra. She's sitting there loving the dogs through the gate or through the fence. Yeah, the dogs are gonna stay here for a couple more days. And after the little incident that we had here recently with our little, uh, well, with our cattle rustler, I am consi seriously considering just leaving the dogs here. And that's horrible, I know. But um, we uh, have a lot to talk about and lots to think about with all of that. Isn't that weird how certain events in your life or like game changers and can change a whole lot of your thought process. And we always thought that we needed the dogs over at the other property, Longhorn Lester's. Come to find out, who would have known that it was right here where you need that extra layer of protection? I think there was about five. Guess what? Sandra, what'd you just see? Like 10 beagles over there. Guys, Jamie? True story. True story. Now, I'm driving. I shouldn't be holding the camera. That is. <laughs> we're driving. Well, we're almost going to turn at Longhorn Lester's. And Jamie goes, Lester, those are eagles. They were. We look up, and there's at least three white-faced, white-tail-tipped, bald eagles. Xander is my witness. Kendra, were you awake? Yeah. <laughs> Jamie saw them. I saw them. We saw them. I wasn't videoing. What I don't know what is up with why they would be circled like eagles that. Eagles but... are out and about. Look at our goats. They're like, uh, we're really busy here. We have no time for you today. What's crazy is no one understands how big of a deal this is. It is mid-December, and we have yet to feed any grains. I mean, I've given a couple of days on rainy days, but I've yet to feed them grains, and look how fat they are. And they're staying fat because there's so much stuff to forage on. I did plant a little bit of winter grass in your farm. And they don't even come running anymore. They don't care. They don't care that dad's here. There's no way you can make a trip to Longhorn Lester's without taking a ride in the Argo. And a ride in the Argo means you have to go into the water. Just go straight into it. Oh, Are you scared? You got this, Xander. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are your thoughts? This is wild. Yeah, we're just driving across the pond in the Argo. Turning up on that bank over there. It's a little bit, not quite as steep to get at. Turning sharper. You got it. All right, you're about to grab. There you go, Zan. That's it. All right, now you have to describe that experience for me. Describe That's that experience. Sweet. So you've never done anything like that before? No, I've never been on an amphibious It's pretty fun, huh? Oh yeah, I got scared when we went in it. Pretty oh. It's pretty steep. <laughs> you can go through again if you want to. All right, I'll go back the other way. Go the other way. Look, the cow's ready to eat, so get on over there, then we'll feed them. We're coming, guys. Who's it in quick? I always think we're sinking right when we get in right there. No, nah, we're not sinking. And we also have a bilge pump. Look, in case you do take it fishing or whatever, you do have a bilge pump that every, on occasion you can bilge it out. All right, Xander. That's what I'm talking about, buddy. Drive over here on this hill. I'll feed them over here on this hill. Hey, guys. Yeah. Drive straight over there on that hill. It'll be good. I'll just feed them in the grass right up here, Xander. That's good. Good clean grass right there. good. All right. Just let me off for a second. And uh, you'll have to excuse me if you feel like 
sometimes you're seeing repeated videos because it's not that I would ever repeat a video or replay a video on the same channel, but I don't know how many people, I like to say double dip and watch videos on YouTube and Facebook. And so for that, I really can't help you. I know that there's enough of an audience who watches only on one or the other to where if I make a video on Facebook, I also have to make a similar video for YouTube or else one of the audiences will not know what's going on. And that's not really fair. Today I'm talking about Pearl and the fact that Pearl is not doing as bad as what we all thought she was. And when I say we all, I know that a lot of you guys in your comments were letting me know that Pearl's fine. Pearl looks like a Longhorn. And guess what? You were right. I joke that I just like big girls. I do. I joke that I like big, thick girls. And so when I, when I look at any of our animals, I like to see that they're healthy. And I see healthy as a little bit chunkier than so thin. And I'm just going to say skinny. I'm not one of those who find skinny, skinny as healthy necessarily. Don't judge me on that one, please. Don't, don't judge me on that one. So here I was the whole time looking at Santana, looking at Gracie, and I'm thinking, uh, they're both so plump and round. What is wrong with Pearl? Uh, I began to deworm. I tried our original block dewormer, and then they went through an entire deworming block, and I didn't see her put on any weight. You know, we'd already taken uh, Jolene off of her. And then I tried to buy a deworming cube. <laughs> you better watch out for daddy's hiney. Uh, she's poking her daddy right there. And he's just like eating, doesn't even care. And then I bought the deworming cubes and they didn't really care for them, but I kept feeding them and they ended up all getting eaten. But I still didn't see any progress. I waited two and a half, three weeks. And then we went to the ivermectin, which is the poron down the backbone. You all remember the day I put Pearl inside of the stall and I got the ivermectin down her backbone. It's, a, it's the kind of dewormer that seeps in. All three of these dewormers have a different dewormer. So as, uh, hold on, I hear a noise and it's a kitten coming up behind me. I'm like, what is that noise? I thought it was an eagle at first. I guess I'm, my mind is stuck on eagles. Bottom line is, I finally follow her around. Based on your suggestions, I follow her around and I collect a stool sample. I have that. I actually drive by and drop it off at my vet's office. And the next day, she lets me know. She actually sends me some, some, some stuff numbers and names that I didn't really know. But bottom line is she does not have a worming issue. It's not a worming issue. I sent her a picture and she says, Lester, she goes, the problem really is not the fact that Pearl is in bad shape. It's that Santana and Gracie are just a little bit heavier, even Tex, they're heavier than what your cows normally are. Longhorns especially, they're not beefy cows, yet these two look like little beefcakes. <laughs> These three are like beefcakes. But uh, Pearl is fine, y'all. Pearl's fine, and I need to stop worrying about her. I'm like, I see ribs. I see bones. She's fine. That reminds me of a couple of things. One time I took Trixie and Maggie to the vet's office because I was for sure that there was something wrong with Trixie. She was so skinny. She was so skinny, and I know something's wrong with her. And so when I got in and the vet finally come into the room to see us, I says, I need you to look at Trixie. I said, something's wrong with her. She's very skinny. And you see how healthy Maggie is. Well, he took one look at both of them. He goes, Lester, he goes, the problem here is not Trixie. The problem is Maggie's overweight. <laughs> and how embarrassed was I to realize that the whole time I'm thinking that Maggie's nice and healthy and plump. Instead, Maggie's actually overweight. And so Santana and Gracie there might be a little bit overweight. But then uh, I was also reminded that Pearl has always been skinny. And this is from a kind lady sent me a video. Oh, it's an orphaned little girl. Or at least so she feels. 
she has been separated from mom and dad again. And you can see why. Look how skinny she is. She's tiny. And she has no fat on her whatsoever. And that's not a good thing to have happen this close to the winter. So what we've done is we've pulled baby Pearl off of mom and dad. And uh, we're going to start pouring the feed to her. But I've always thought that Pearl was skinny. And so Pearl is in fact just a skinny little girl. Young lady. I'll just say young lady. And that's just her body type, y'all. She's a skinny longhorn, which is very typical. But uh, as far as what they could see from her stool sample, she's fine. Oh, look at them both cleaning themselves. All right. Keep it classy, ladies. Keep it classy. Pearl is trying to move Tex off of his food. And he's Tex is not going to leave. Pearl's like, you know I'm skinny, right? You need to move over, Dad. I'm skinny. I need to eat. And guys, don't worry. There's plenty of food. I put food on the ground today, guys. I know you're not going to like that too much, but I want you to notice that I put it in the grass. Lester's not one who's going to feed in the dirt ever. And so I did put it in the grass, and we're fine. Look at these two. I always worry that someone's going to put an eye out when they start bumping horns. Look how close her horns are going to his eye. And then his horns to her eyes. I guess they know what they're doing. Longhorns have amazing control of their horns. They really do. But it worries me. Santana's wondering what the heck this cat's doing out here in her pasture. Way over here. Look how far we are from the shop. <laughs> We're way over here. But uh, no, everybody, don't not to worry. Pearl is fine. And, I, and it gave me the peace of mind that I needed to know that everything is good. I was worrying for nothing. And that she's going to be okay. We've talked to the pond guys. And they're going to come out. They haven't come out yet. They've been busy. It's also been a very rainy week. But uh, I believe that what they're going to do. Is build up this side of the pond. They'll have to bring in some dirt. Probably uh, most likely clay. And then they're going to bring in some more rock. Uh, and they will build this up. I would say probably about what we need to make the pond balance out. I'd say at least five or six foot of building this all up. And then at that point, the pond will begin to continue to feel as it rains to where our pond is all the way balanced out. Because right now, we only have about a foot before we begin our overflow over on this side. Yet you can see on the far end over there, we still have 10 foot or so to go before we reach the top. As far as the erosion, we don't know about that yet. We will talk to Paul and uh, Chuck, which are our pond guys, and we will go from there on what they say. All right, so Paul has come out and he's working on the pond. He's getting some ideas. He's drawing some stuff up. And I'm gonna try to paraphrase what he told me. I may be wrong with exactly, but what he has over there, you can see on the ground is an instrument. That's a laser type device. And he wants to start building up from that point straight across to that point, going around with type, a, a berm type set uh, set up. And then, of course, where the spillway is at, that has to be more of a drive lane because we drive over that. So that'll be more of a road which will require rock and other things. But it's going to be built up to be that high. Paul says if they build it up that high, then we're looking at water coming to right about the base of that last tree right there, which will be fine but that'll give us the kind of pond that we need. As far as the erosion, he says that they'll bring the dozer in and they'll cut about half of this down and then smooth it back out. The bottom half, we're not gonna worry about because once the pond fills up, you'll never see it anyway. You know what that means, don't you? It means that you're gonna get up off your feet. Don't you poke me in the, if you, okay, biting my hand is one thing. Bite me in the ear is something different. And so, listen to me. I want y'all to get up and join me. Join us, because we're going to do a little dance for y'all. And I'd like you to join us, okay? So, come on, get up off your chairs and love seat in your couches. I'm getting ticked. <laughs> if she bites me in the ear, I don't want to get bit in the ear. <laughs> She's a good girl, y'all, and I love her so much. Yeah, you can turn it off for me. That means get up and dance, y'all. That means get up and... Ouch! That was my finger. Don't let...
Let your troubles fester Come watch Longhorn Lester <laughs> Yeah, something like that